Well, hello. 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 How goes it? Ah, welcome to the DTS Sound Space uh, here at K Rock. It's going to be a good night, I think, right? We're going to yeah. have fun. Is everyone having a good time? Got some pizza, got some booze. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. It's, it's very important to us. You guys ready for Death Cab for Cutie? Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on. You've got to put up with us first. We are Klein Alley Show, your morning show on K Rock. Hold for applause. Um, anyone else here skipping their kids back to school night so they can be here tonight? Yeah, all oh, right. Oh, nice. Thank you Absentee for being parents. here. Absentee parents. Parents of the year, here we go. And on that note, please make some noise. Death Cab for Cutie, here they come. Wow, look at you guys. You age well. Thanks for being here. Thank you for spending uh, it's like Christmas Eve for you, I would imagine. The album out tomorrow. Any, uh, any traditions, superstitions you do the night before the, uh, the album comes out? Uh, not really. We, we like to try to get out to dinner together at some point in a couple days before the dinner, before the dinner comes out. Before the, <laughs> before the, before the record comes out. Uh, we did that last night. So, uh, yeah, just kind of spends time Who together. Who picks up the bill? Is that you? Is that your job? You split it? Uh, we put it on the band card. Nice. Whoa. Band card, yeah. That's cool. so we How do you pick the it. place? What's that? How do you pick the place you're going to go to? Uh, well, if we're here, usually Zach Ray, our keyboard player, picks it because he's because he lives here and he's very familiar with the. Uh, he's a foodie. If it's kind of an annoying word, but that's what he is. You know. <laughs> no, I think it's a well-known word here. I think yeah. it's acceptable. Um, well, of course, it's exciting. You know, you're on the eve of your tenth studio album, and you know, I was reading about you guys recently, and Ben, you were saying that. Even though you've been around for a long time, you've been making music for decades, you feel now like you're a new band. Why is that? Well, I think, I, I feel when Dave and, and Zach joined the band, we, they joined when, you know, when we were touring Kintsugi, and that was a record we had made with, with Chris. And then making Thank You For Today was the first record we made together as a five piece. But it was really done in a similar methodology that we'd used before, where I would bring in songs that were more or less complete, and everybody would kind of find places for themselves on the record. But with this record, we we wrote a you know a good portion of it together, and we spent a lot more time arranging the music. Uh, I, I should back up. I think when we came out of making "Thank You for Today," we realized like, well, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna make some music next time. I think it's now that we've got the jitters out. I think we're ready to really get down to business. And so in making this record, we really dove in, and ev everybody had carte blanche to do what they wanted to do, and kind of you know I I, I don't know. I, but yeah, same. Yeah. I mean, with the last record, I think Ben and Nick and Jason were probably wondering, like, can we still do this? We've lost a band member. Zach and I were probably both thinking, like, how do we fit into this thing? You know, and, and there was just a lot of, like, making up the rules as we went, went along with that record. And this one, we just kind of hit the ground running, knowing how to communicate, feeling yeah. confident about our chemistry. Um, it just seemed like there were no rules this time. It's weird you say that because I know that of all the nine previous albums, you made this one very differently. And, and the whole process, as I was hearing about, was where you were splitting it up by day of the week, seems like a crazy thing for a band to do in the sense of you, it's almost like a choose your own adventure song that went from band member to band member. What was that process like for this album that comes out tomorrow? Yeah, so, you know, I think around half the record turned out this songs from this kind of methodology. But basically how we did it was, uh, I'd come up with this uh, songwriting experiment. At, we, at first, it was just going to be kind of an experiment where you know there's five days in the work week. There's five of us, so we would choose a random order of the five of us that was not necessarily starting with me. And let's say Dave might make a piece of music on Monday, upload it to a Dropbox. Maybe Nick pulls it down on Tuesday. He adds bass to it, uploads it on Wednesday. Let's say I pull it down. I add. I write lyrics and melody and guitar and stuff, upload it, so on and so forth, till Friday when we have a song. But the rules were that um, you had only the, that 24 hours to work on the piece of music, so it had to be completed. Your portion needed to be completed within 24 hours. And also, you had complete editorial control. So if you didn't like something, you could just remove it. And, and everybody knew that that was the case. So, the, you know, for the most, you know, there were times where we, by the song got to Friday, somebody would be like, hey, what the fuck? You know, and be like, sorry, man, that was the rule. Yeah, Them's but, the rules. You know? Yeah, I mean, a, a great illustrative story for that is for Here to Forever on that song. That week, I started the song, came up with this bass line that I thought was super cool, and I passed it to Dave. Dave wrote some guitar chords. He was like, yeah, this thing's moving in a great exactly. direction. Ben had it on Wednesday, on, and he pulled down what we did, and he was like, this is terrible, and <laughs> erased it, and boom, wrote Here to Forever. So I like to think that our 
combined efforts put Ben into a corner where he was like, I gotta, I gotta start from scratch here. <laughs> well, and that it, was, had we not been so terrible early in the week, maybe Here to Forever wouldn't exist. That so, was an extreme you know, example that <laughs> yeah, happened only <laughs> once. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but, but it's good. I mean, it illustrates just how much we trusted everybody in the process. Like, we, you had complete editorial control. You could do, and if I had been on a Thursday and I didn't like anything, it would be up to me to strip it down and, and build it back up again. So All the power. How many songs of, went in the trash? Oh, whoa. Dozens. Really? I mean, I think, dozens, we, yeah. I think we did... 45 to 50 songs this way and wow. I think six or seven of them are on the record so do so when math. is the uh, other album gonna come out with the other 30 <laughs> well I think I, I think at this point in our career I think I think less is more is probably a better approach <laughs> I, I feel there's this trend with some bands that have been around lo as long as we have or longer that uh, people want to be drowning in music from them and I, I think at this point we're very concerned and uh, cognizant of our, our, our catalog and the, the legacy of our own catalog. And I think the last thing we want to do is water it down by just putting out too much music. I feel at this point, we're 10 albums in, you know, I, I, I only want us to be making records and we feel we have something to say and we have 10 to 12 songs or whatever it might be that we feel, yeah, these are really good, but I want people to hear these rather than, oh, we should make a record so we can go and play shows again, you know? Yeah. Or, oh, people are going to love a 30 song drop of, you know, a triple album. It's like, <laughs> yeah, there might be some people that like that, yeah. but at a certain point, you know, it just feels like, I, I feel it's better that we kind of hold things back and only put out the things that we feel are really strong rather than just, here's an idea we had, do you like it? Right, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, um, one of the songs is, you know, as you've said, Ben, is like a tribute to kind of your life's work and all the people that you've worked with on, you know, Postal Service and Death Cab and up until now. With all the people that you've worked with over the years, how many of them are you kitchen, keeping in touch with? I mean, are you doing like an HBD happy birthday text to, to them? I mean, how close is, or do you not keep in touch at all? Yeah, I, I think we are on good terms with everybody that's been in the band over the years, and, and I'm on good terms with Jimmy from Pulse Service. And, and I, I think it's kind of like, it's, 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 I think being in a band is not dissimilar from other kinds of relationships where you go through a very intense period with people and things might not end well, but at a certain point you look back and you go, you know what, I'm, I feel very grateful that this person was in my life. That's usually the case, that unless something catastrophic happened or you know, somebody did something terrible to somebody else, which I'd hope to think that we've never done. <laughs> um, All the bands that you've uh, toured with over the years, played with over the years, you look back now 25 years, are there bands that stand out to you that you either said that you helped, you feel like you helped usher them into the mainstream or other bands that were good to you guys when you were coming up? Well, I, I can't say with any certainty who we might have shepherded into success, but I do know that in 2004, uh, Pearl Jam uh, took us out on a tour uh, called the Vote for Change Tours around the 2004 election. And um, being around them, it, it was very uh, educational to see how they operated, not only just as a band, but how they operated with their crew and the people that worked with them. And that they genuinely like loved each other. They really enjoyed being around each other. And you know, I remember we all spoke about at the time, like, wow, that's that's how you do it. Not necessarily that we had this ambition to be as big as they were, because I mean, who could possibly be that popular? Um, but more so that like, if you're gonna do it, this is the way to do it. And you scale it to whatever wherever you are. But this they they are they are the model. They're they're the band that everybody should be striving to be, I believe. Well, you guys have obviously great chemistry like you talked about, and I just wanted to ask you, because it seems like, Ben, you know how to say no when an uh, idea is shitty, and he pitches some really <laughs> awful shit to me. Yeah, so, yeah. like, what do you, say, what can I say to him if he's like, hey, let's do this bit? I'm like, oh my God, so bad. That's <laughs> actually what you say currently. I, I, That's what you say. We, we kind of we have a, we, we have not so much a rule in the band, but, um, that if you're going to shoot down an idea, that it would be in your best interest to have a better idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, Take and, that, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah, I mean, Christ. It, because it, you know, in, a, in any kind of dialogue like that, if you're just if you're if you're just saying no all the time, but right. you have nothing else to put on the table, it just winds down. You run out of steam. So. In, in the effort to keep it moving, you have to throw something on the table. Well, I should, I you should, should yeah. have some skin in the game. You know, yeah, like and it, I, should, it, I should clarify, yeah. not, you know, better is kind of a subjective uh, <laughs> term, but to have an alternative idea. There it is. Yeah. There um, so I think, I think the places that we would get in the band where that were the most contentious was when somebody would say, I don't like that. 
And then you'd be like, why not? And you just go like, I don't know. I just don't like it. Yeah. Do you have anything else? I don't, but I just don't like that. That's not constructive. Right. Yep. Well, we'd love to hog all your time for ourselves, but we did open this up to some questions. So we have some questions that okay. uh, your fans have, uh, have written. We, don't, we haven't seen these yet, so you can pass. You can answer them. Okay. Uh, these are all from people that are here tonight or couldn't be here tonight because they didn't get into this very exclusive show. But are you guys having fun so far? Great. Yes, great. Wonderful. All right. This one comes from Sarah in Woodland Hills. Uh, you can make great music out of any sad situation. What sad moment would you rather write a song about? Uh, somebody who, a uh, kid who dropped an ice cream cone on the floor, or getting to the airport and your luggage is 54 pounds oh. and it's overweight. <laughs> it's brutal. Uh, you know, I think maybe, I want to say the ice cream, but I think, I think the, it might be the luggage, thank you. Uh, it might be the luggage, uh, because then there, then the narrative would be what you had to leave at the airport. And then maybe yes. who you might be leaving it with. <laughs> so could if you be, had to be, take uh, four beautiful. pounds out of there, then you're like, you are, you are, you know, there is kind of uh, the melancholy of having to leave something behind, but also the ability to kind of give something to someone else and then to see their reaction to it. Um, it depends on what you have in your suitcase. Yeah. Uh, that is four, four yeah. pounds. Point in answer. Yeah. <laughs> what the four pounds is. Uh, ben, uh, where do you rank yourself on the following list of Ben's? Uh, ben Gibbard, Ben Stiller, Benny Hanna. <laughs> Um, man, uh, I'm, I got it. I'm in third place on that list because, you know, Ben, ben Stiller is hilarious yeah. and a humanitarian in his yeah, own right. Good guy. Uh, Benny Han is delicious. Sure is. And universal. You can go there for any birthday or special event. <laughs> you know, any kind of, any, any kind of anniversary is good for Benny Hanna, I would say. I'm hoping for that Benny Hanna gift card. To go, sh go there for your next album release. There we go. There we go. Um, all right. Uh, if you go to your Instagram, Ben, you don't have any pictures. No. You have nothing on your socials. You don't want to deal with updating everyone on your comings and goings. What could we do to get you to post one picture with all of us? Whoa. Ah. The second picture ever on your Instagram could happen right now. I'm sure it will be on my Instagram as a story. Mm. Is that, does that count? I'm going to say that counts. All right, we'll accept Story? it. Story? Okay. Yeah. We can do that. <laughs> uh, final question. This is actually one I wrote, um, so I will go ahead and take the credit. What was harder, running a 100-mile mar uh, marathon, ultra marathon, or this interview right now? Uh, oh, the 100-mile marathon. Uh, that's <laughs> okay. not close. Yeah. Good. Great. Uh, the album is out tomorrow. You can all support this band lots of ways. Go to the shows, being here, buying the album. I promised Ben I would not sell bootleg copies out of my car after the show tonight, and I will not. Uh, are you guys ready to hear them play some live music? Great. Okay, we're going to reset, and then we'll be back in two minutes. In a moment, Sounds more good. Death Count for Cutie. Give it up. Thanks, guys. It's been a battle just to wake and greet the day. They all disappear like sugar in my coffee. The bitterness remains The acidity devouring my body
the fifties There's only one thought that swirls around my head now And that's that everyone there on the screen Yeah, everyone there on the screen Well, they're all dead now They're all dead now It ain't easy living above And I can't help but keep falling in love Bones and ashes Bones and ashes When the color's too bold and bright I'm daydreaming in black and white Until it passes Until it passes play a song from a record called Narrow Stairs for you.
tracks With the things that could have been all repressed But you said your vows And you closed the door On so many record coming out tomorrow uh, and this is the title track to that record the song is called Asphalt Meadows <laughs> Kiss with a lonely prayer when you slipped it into my mouth I closed my eyes and held it in and I exhaled it out The glow of the downtown light Casting shadows across your face As if all the buildings knew I could only know half of you and I was a snake under your flower And I just wanted to disappear story of your beauty never to reappear there's a name written on your cap of the bruised and broken bones tells everybody that you meet to whom the damage is owed we rode a wave of white noise beneath the city sleeping the train doors closing I felt your sorrow deepen Here in the asphalt meadow There's only one thing that grows Finding life through the concrete Getting trampled under our feet You set all your bridges and roads They all lead to an airport Drifting off into the sky Always depart but never seem to arrive and There in the early hour Lying naked in your unmade bed I was thinking of how to tell you What my ticket read Your kiss was a lonely prayer Single candle slowly burning down But the light, your light was beautiful Within its here and now We rode a wave of white noise Beneath the city sleeping I saw the train doors closing I felt your sorrow deepen Here in the asphalt meadow Tremble under our feet We rode a 
Thank you very much. You guys okay? Have a good time? more song and get out of your hair. I know, I know, parting is such sweet sorrow. But we appreciate you guys coming down in the middle of the day for this. I guess it's not middle of the day. It's almost dinner time. Late afternoon. 
And uh, once again, thanks to K-Rock for having us. We really appreciate all the support over the years. This song goes out to them. See you guys soon. Thank you.